Hey, how's it going? Good, good. I have something I think you might be interested in. It's the very first issue of Playboy, Volume 1, Issue 1. Okay. The Marilyn Monroe Playboy. Awesome. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to try and sell my first issue of Playboy magazine, the Marilyn Monroe issue. It's not a copy. This is a genuine first edition. I'd like to get $2,000 for the magazine, but don't tell him I, I will take probably $1,600 if I can get it. So where did you get this? Well, my father bought it uh, back in 1953, and then before he passed away, he gave it to me. This was the very first Playboy, and I truly believe if Marilyn wasn't in the first issue, I don't know if it would have lasted much longer. This is what lit the whole thing on fire. How do you know so much about Playboys? Trust me, chum, I know. This is amazing. This is the most collectible issue of Playboy ever. Most Playboys are worth a few bucks. This is worth a few thousand. Do you know how Marilyn Monroe ended up in this magazine? No, I don't. In 19, I think it was 47, Marilyn Monroe, then Norma Jean, needed some money, and she wasn't a star yet, hadn't been in any movies. She got paid some money to do some nude photographs. Mm -hmm. Well, 1952 comes along, and she gets a movie deal. Later in the year, the photographer who took the pictures looked at a movie poster and going, oh my gosh, I think I have pictures of her. And he ended up selling the pictures to Playboy magazine. Mm. Okay. The studios thought it was just going to ruin her. It was going to ruin the movie. But the great thing was, Marilyn, she just played it off. And she just went, yeah, that was me. You ought to buy the magazine. <laughs> That's wild. The thing you have to remember, this was the 50s. Just a few months earlier, she was getting criticized for the picture she took during the 1952 Miss America pageant for her low neckline. Just imagine what people thought when they saw that picture in that magazine of her on the red velvet. These are really collectible. I mean, if you collect Playboys, this is the one everybody wants. What were you looking to do, pawn it or sell it? I'd like to sell it. And what do you want for it? Uh, 2,000. Dollars? Dollars, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> um, I'm thinking closer to 1,000. I think 1,000's a little low. Um, might go 16. What do you think we should pay for it, Chum? I can buy a new one right now for six bucks. <laughs> Full color. I mean, I'll, I'll cut to the chase. I'll give you fourteen hundred, uh, not a dime more. Okay, I'll go for it. Thanks. God, you have great negotiating. <laughs> <laughs> I generally don't like buying magazines because they're hard to sell, but this is awesome. I could probably double or triple my money on this, but I think I'm gonna keep it in the case for a while because it's gonna bring people in the door. What do we got? I happen to have the uh, actual Playboy magazine that was used in the movie, Forrest Gump. Really? Yeah. Jenny is right here. So this is the one where she got kicked out of college for wearing the sweater. Right. Well, I guess the pawn shop's like a box of chocolates. So you never really know what's going to come in. <laughs> <laughs> I bought the Playboy magazine at a charity auction. I was in Vietnam in 1967 and 68. We used to throw around Playboy magazines from bunk to bunk, so it really was apropos that they did the same thing in the movie. I think there's a lot of collectors out there that would want this piece. Probably one of my favorite movies of all time. It's actually really funny. All the uh, studio people, all that, they said it would never make any money. It almost didn't even go into production. They said it was sucked so bad. I never knew that. I thought it was great. It's one of the best movies of all yeah. time. It was really like a sad story of her. When you think about it, you're really happy for Forrest Gump the entire time, but Ginny's life just sucked from, like, from the time <laughs> she was born. <laughs> Forrest Gump became a cultural icon and a huge success. The movie won six Oscars, including Best Picture and Best Actor for Tom Hanks. A lot of people don't know, but the title role was offered to John Travolta, but he turned it down. I guess shit happens. During their heyday, they had like seven million people a month that were subscribing to the magazine. Everybody always read it for the articles, right? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so they actually wrote a whole article about her? Yeah. The Girls of the South. That's Girls really of the South. It's really cool, actually. I just, I didn't know they actually put it in a real magazine. I thought it was just like a prop or something. Hey. Any idea of what you're looking to get out of it, or? Uh, I need $2,500, really. And I think that's a bargain. It's kind of a lot of money for a fake Playboy, right? <laughs> I don't look at it as a fake Playboy. I look at it as something from the movie that's so one of a kind. Would you take $1,500? No. I'll go to $2,200. 
Two grand, you got a deal. You got a deal. All right, cool. Let's go do some paperwork. Stupid is what stupid does, and I'd be stupid to pass on $2,000. I'm going to take the $2,000 and run Forest Run. Hey, how can I help you? Well, I've got an item here I thought you might be interested in. OK. It's very unique, one of a kind. It's a Playboy bunny outfit. OK. That my girlfriend gave me. Why would your girlfriend give you a Playboy bunny outfit? Because she was a Playboy bunny at the New York club. Just wanted to make sure you didn't wear it. I, <laughs> I decided to come to the pawn shop today because I want to sell my Playboy bunny outfit. I've had the outfit for several, several years. It's been in my closet, and I'm not going to wear it. But I probably wouldn't walk out of the pawn shop for less than 3000 So what was it like to date a Playboy bunny? She was very nice to date. <laughs> OK. All right. So um, tell me about these things. I have the tag, her actual employee card, original cufflinks, and I have the bodysuit. OK. We got the ears. We got the name. You got the whole, the whole outfit here. This is really iconic. Hugh Hefner, he really was brilliant. He was in his early 20s when he started Playboy. When he opened his first Playboy club in 1960, Hugh Hefner definitely knew what he was doing. He made it exclusive. And next thing you know, there was Playboy clubs all around the world. What's cool about this outfit is the fact that it's an original. If you notice the ties on both sides, the later outfits did not have these. So this was the prototype. OK. And this is the manual on how to wear your ears? Yep. They had to go through a training session. You didn't just put the uniform on and go <laughs> wait okay. tables. This bunny outfit is in pretty amazing condition. And I'm thinking, since Vegas has a real long history of showgirls, a piece like this will be easy to sell. So how much do you want for it? About 3000 <sighs> That's That's more than I'd be willing to go. I'm thinking more like 1000 bucks. I've seen them listed on the internet for four to 6000 So uh, I, I, I know that's what they're listed for, but what are they getting? Um, how about meeting me halfway, 1500 It's an original. I'll go 12. That's the best I can do. OK. I'll go 12. Deal. We finally settled on $1,200. And obviously, um, I can't use the outfit. So you know, it works for me. It works for him. That's good. Hey, how you doing? Pretty good. I bought some magazines at a garage sale, and these are tucked in between the pages. They say Playboy on them. Shopping for uh, used Playboys, huh? I came down to the pawn shop today to sell my 1955 Playboy comic prints. I think these things can be worth some big money just because they're old and they're from Playboy. I basically got them for free, and I'm ready to cash in. So you got these at a yard sale, huh? Yes, sir. All right. You know much about them, or? Uh, this one says. October 55, this one's December 55. OK. Yeah, this is not very long after Playboy got started. I think uh, Hefner worked for Esquire magazine and asked for a $5 a year raise. And they told him to go pound salt. So he got a $1,000 loan and um, went out and started Playboy. Almost 65 years later, we're still here talking about Multi -million. it. Multi-million. Yeah. Hugh Hefner knew how to add a touch of class to his magazines. He had articles from famous writers, and he hired some of the best-known cartoonists to draw his cartoons. It definitely separated Playboy from the typical smut magazine. What they are is um, the cartoonist would illustrate something, draw it out, then he'd have to get approval for it. And they would fly back and forth like that over and over again until they finally put it in the magazine. This one's kind of funny. It's a cocktail waitress telling the bartender to cut Benson off because he just pinched her. This one doesn't have a caption, but I'm assuming the humor is, is the uh, guy that's laying in bed is looking up at his own picture as the attorney advertising in the hospital. These cartoons are definitely a bit dated, but it is original signed artwork. And 1950s Playboy stuff has gotten real collectible. So what do you want to do with them, my man? I'd like to sell them. Any idea of what you want for them? Uh, I'd like 100 bucks a piece. 100 bucks a piece. Be honest with you, man. They're worth a lot more than that. The, yeah, okay. they, they are worth more than that. Um, me and my big mouth. But um, how about this? I give you 500 a piece for them. That works for me. Well, I appreciate you being honest with me. Sounds good, man. Let's Sounds go right good. Up. I couldn't believe they were worth that much money. I got a thousand bucks in my pocket, and I'm a happy man. Hey, how's it going? Good. How you doing? I've got a pretty unique uh, set of cards that I'd like you to take a look at. Okay. 
Yeah, Playboy cards. I'm going to have to examine these for a while. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> My hiding spot for my Playboys was in the garage. These cards are basically your standard collecting cards, except for we're seeing half-dressed women. Hugh Hefner is kind of like my hero. So how many cards do you have here? I have a little bit over 100 in this book. Believe that it's a complete set. All right. Playboy's got like an interesting history. Hugh Hefner wanted to make a guy's magazine with girls in it, but he wanted it a little bit more classy. Marilyn Monroe was in the first issue. And by the 1970s, they were selling like 7 million magazines a month. It was insanity. Right. I believe in the early 90s, what happened is they started putting three or four cards in every magazine. After a while, you would have like every cover from Playboy magazine. How much were you looking to get out of them? I'd like $500 for the collection. All right, so l let me just explain a few things to you. In the early 90s, they were coming up with every kind of card in the world. And then uh, the card bubble was worse than the housing bubble. I mean, <laughs> it, it completely imploded. Um, I mean, these were in all the issues. You can buy the issues for like two, three bucks on the internet. And to tell you the truth, I don't think these are going to sell. I really don't. I mean, um, I'd like to make you an offer on something, but I think they're basically worthless. So it's probably one of those things I need to sit on for another 50 years. I doubt it'll even be worth money then. Oh, man, you're crushing my dreams. Well, thanks for coming in, man. Hey, appreciate it. As a general rule, stuff given out by the millions ain't going to be worth much. But they were nice to look at. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have here? This is a caught live at the Playboy Club bunny tail. OK. Do you know why Hugh Hefner chose the bunny as the logo? Because the reputation bunnies have. <laughs> I have a genuine Playboy bunny tail. Anybody, in my opinion, could put on one of those bunny costumes and look amazing. I'm asking $500, which doesn't seem like a lot for a piece of tail, if you ask me. This thing is definitely cool. How'd you get it? Well, I was a Playboy bunny back in the mid-1970s, okay. and they <laughs> had these briefly at the Playboy Club. Why did they sell them on plaques? The members there were offering the girls hundreds of dollars to buy their tails. If you were to go on safari, wouldn't you like to come home with a trophy <laughs> like this? The bunny outfits that were worn at the Playboy Clubs was the first outfit ever to receive a US patent and a trademark. So even though it's just a tail, there's some cool history here. So how much did you want for it? 500 would be great. I had a Playboy bunny outfit a few years ago, and it took me forever to sell it. Um, I can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll give you 250 for it. Well, so 300 <laughs> sounds, I mean. Um, yeah, I'll give you 300 bucks for it. It's a deal. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like you got a lot of stuff. As a matter of fact, I've got some things that I'll bet you you've never seen before. And if you're interested, I can bring them back a little later today, maybe? Yeah, bring them back in. OK, I'll do okay. that. Let's go do the paperwork on this. All, All right. right, let's go. I've got so many Playboy collectibles, so it's probably a good time to hand them off. I'm here to sell some magazines. Um, Rick, do you want to uh, come look at this? What do we got? Oh, cool. <laughs> I'm coming into the pawn shop today because I'm trying to sell the collection of Playboy magazines that my husband and I have. Cool. So, uh, you've been collecting these or, uh... My husband. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Did you mind him collecting them? No. Huh? Not even a little at first? Mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you want to do with these? Did you want to sell them? Actually, I wanted to sell them. OK. Have you ever uh, bought or sold Playboy magazines before? Yeah, I have. And uh, the one thing is about the problem with Playboys is 
is like every guy keeps them. <laughs> You know, okay. I mean, it's just something a guy doesn't throw away. Uh, obviously. It's sort of like a man rule. Uh -huh. And, uh... Ew. <laughs> what do you mean, ooh? So gross. <laughs> <laughs> so gross. What is the most expensive Playboy that you've come across? Uh, I haven't actually come across one, but the Marilyn Monroe is the most expensive one. It is? Yeah. Uh, that one's worth a few thousand dollars, and I've just been on the shape. Rick, I don't feel comfortable looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> so I, mean, I guess there could be a sexual harassment lawsuit in the work right here. <laughs> okay, it's going to take me a half hour, 45 minutes to go through these to find out what they're worth. And uh, after that, I can give you a price. That's all right. Okay, I'll walk around the shop. Okay. There's got to be over 100 Playboys in this box. I don't have time to look up every one of them. That's what I got employees for. All right, Peaches, we actually have to go through these. Okay. Okay, so you're going to have to go on the internet and find a collector's site, something like that, find out what they're worth. Can I get some gloves? <laughs> no, no gloves. This is going to be super exciting. Ew. We looked through them all, and there's just no good dates here. I was kind of hoping at least one of them would have a good picture in it. Well, they all got good pictures in them. <laughs> OK. <laughs> They just don't have any of those pictures that are worth a lot any of money. Any of the ones that are valuable. Yeah. OK. I could give you like 100 bucks for all of them. That's fine. Unfortunately, none of the Playboys were worth any money. Uh, most of them were in really bad condition, and there wasn't a prize in the bunch. All right, Peaches will take care of you. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for Thank the business. Thank you. Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you? Pretty good. What do you got? I have a little something I hope that you will be interested in. It's a stock certificate worth 30 shares of Playboy stock. Okay, cool. Where did, where did you get this? It was actually gifted to me when I was a staff photographer at Playboy back in the 80s. So you used to be a photographer for Playboy? I was a photographer for Playboy up until 2002, actually. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say to this. I'm here to try to sell my Playboy stock certificate. I've had this certificate for all these years, and I forgot, and I came upon it, and I thought, I'll just bring it to a pawn shop here and see if I could sell it. I'd like to get 400 for it, but I'm going to try to get 500 if I can. Being an astronaut and a Playboy photographer is every 16-year-old's dream. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hugh Hefner was a marketing genius. You know, he came up with a magazine with naked girls in it, but you were sophisticated if you bought it. <laughs> exactly. I, buy, I just buy it for the articles. So when he went public, he made this stock certificate right here. And the stock did really well at the initial offering because every guy wanted the stock certificate because it had that picture on it. Right. That, that's actually a Playboy model on there, right? Her name was Willie Ray. She was February 1971 Playmate. But the problem was guys were getting stock certificates with one share. Exactly. It turned into a paperwork nightmare. When you have just millions of different stockholders that are owning one or two shares and you have to do paperwork, it gets really, really expensive. That's why Playboy changed their stock tickets around. That's why these are worth money. I mean, it's all in good shape. Well, what are you looking to get out of it? I'd like to get $500 out of it. I'll give you like 300 bucks for it. There's some really old original ones that were actually signed by Hugh Hefner, and they weren't, you know, auto penned. They were actually signed by him. Gotcha. They go for a lot more. But, uh, you know what? I'm going to leave this one up to you. You got any access to Playboy still? <laughs> <laughs> I know a lot of Playmates. I I'll tell you what, I'll give you 400 bucks you give me into the Midsummer Night Street party. All right. All right, man. Cool. 400, 400 bucks. All right, man. What is the Midsummer Night Stream? Don't worry about it. You're too old. <laughs> <laughs> He'll write you up over there. I think the offer made by Corey for $400 and me getting him into a Playboy party, that's like an even deal. So I think we're both winning on this. I'm back. Hey, what's up? <laughs> well, have I got some fun stuff for you. Playboy keys. I know what these are. OK, good. Do you know any of the history of this? Um, I know that when you're a member, you got a key. That's right. Me, personally, I would never be part of a club that would have me as a member. <laughs> <laughs> well, I made a pretty decent deal on the bunny tail plaque, and now I'm back with an amazing collection of Playboy Club keys from the early 1960s. Can't wait to see what happens. 
Tell me about these things. Okay, there are 17 different keys, and each key has a letter designation that represents a different club, and then there's a number that represents the actual member. The lowest number that I have is from the Philippines, and it's P9. That's really cool. So we have a key here in like a special little case? So what you have here, it's the C1 key, and you've got some history here. Only eight people had C1 Playboy keys. So what was so special about C1 being on the back of the key? C1 meant that you were allowed to date a Playboy bunny. Hugh Hefner's key is a C1 key. That's really, really cool. This is a great collection right here. Thank you. How much do you want for them? I could do 3,500 for this. I probably 80,000 on that. I am way off from that. Where are you? Okay. <laughs> First on these right here, you can go on the internet, there's auctions all the time. And on those auctions, they go for between 150 and 250 bucks. And for me to make any money, I'd be like less than half that. This one, I mean, I've been in the collectible business a very long time, okay? I don't see someone paying $80,000 for this. If this was Hugh Hefner's, maybe. Okay. Maybe. But I truly believe it, a Playboy actually would probably go for a couple grand. Thanks for bringing it in. I, I just I just don't see us making a deal on this. We, we are in two different worlds on the value. Mm -hmm. But one of these days, I should have a beer with you, because I would absolutely love to talk about the Playboy. You're book. on. OK, okay. Hey, sounds good. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for bringing it in. OK. I would like to make a phone call. Make sure that he never gets into the Playboy Mansion, and make sure that I get that beer, too.